start with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. So this is the monthly meeting of the Shandaken Conservation Advisory Council. Um, and we have five members here. Yeah. Um, Catherine. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Are you ready for the roll call? Sure. Okay. Beth Waterman, Angel Molina, here. Aaron Lee, Maya Lilly, Catherine Del Tufo, Robert Drake, and Constance Bloomfield. Welcome. Con Constance Bloomfield and I have been in communication about a project that she's interested in working on. And we'll give you an opportunity to tell us about it. OK. Thank you. Um, approval of the minutes. Did everyone get the minutes? I sent them out this morning. Yes. yes. And did anyone have any corrections or changes? No? Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Please? So may. Angel? Second. Second, Karen. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> All right. Uh, membership items, correspondence, and announcements. Oh, thank you, Tom. I, I circulated the newspaper article about us to everyone, and, and that was really fantastic, I thought. Um, great information, and obviously Brian Sweeney just watched the video. So that's a real, um, a real bonus to have these videos that newspaper writers mm -hmm. and editors can just look at, and, and if they need to fill up the page, there's stuff in there for them to fill it up with. So that was, I thought, great. And, and it did celebrate our recent victories with the NYSERDA funding. So uh, I also think I circulated and I sent it to Joyce. There's a hat, uh, a hazardous waste day, household hazardous waste. It's um, 8.24 in New Paltz. Um, Joyce put it on the town's Facebook page, so it's available there if you want to look it up. Or you can look at Ulster County Resource Recovery Agency. But um, they usually have one in Kingston, which is closer uh, later. Just there's usually a second one in Kingston following the New Paltz one. They usually have two in the spring and two in the late summer, early fall. Okay. And there should be one, but I can't, I didn't look at their. Yeah. All right, thank you. I'll, I'll look it up. Excuse me, Beth, what can you bring there? Um, Paint you batteries. Can bring rechargeable batteries, um, waste oil, um, toxic substances like. Um, you can look on their website, they okay. have a complete list of what you can bring, but um, um, pesticides, uh, cleaning products that. Um, stuff like that, but they do have it all listed on their website. Thank you. UCRRA. Um, and electronics? No, that's a separate day. Well, they do that at every recycling center all the time, but they probably do it there as well. Okay. Um, on August 29th, Ulster County, um, Environmental Management Council is having their annual round table, which um, I have attended for the past couple of years. And they, they provide dinner. It's in Rosendale. And it is, I didn't write down the hours. I think it starts at 5, and it's over by, maybe it's in my it's calendar. It's 5.32. 8. Eight. Yeah, 5 is networking. Uh, 5.30 it starts and it's over by 8, hopefully. Uh, one year it went on way too long and we all 
wrote nasty evaluations. And so last year, it was very nicely organized. <laughs> so I'm hoping that this year they won't put us through that torture again. But Karen's going to go. OK, let me see. Mm. Or do I have it written wrong? I don't know. OK. Let's we'll just check, check, that. check on that. Yeah, right. let's check that. And then um, on the 19th of September, partners, Hudson Valley Partners for Climate Action are having a climate mixer from 4.30 to 7.30 at the Hutton Brickyard in Kingston. So I have never been to one of their events, and I don't know if I'm going to plan to attend this, but if anybody's interested in going, I'll, if I'm available, I, I might okay. go this time. Uh, Bruce used to go, and he, he really enjoyed them and found yeah. it very useful. As I do the round table, because you hear what all the other CACs are doing. And it's, it's pretty, um, you get good ideas. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I know last year when I went, I was amazed. Some of them have newsletters. And um, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I can add that to my <laughs> to-do list. I obviously haven't done it yet, but I also was inspired last year by the Earth Day celebrations that other people had, and then everybody wanted to do an Earth Day celebration, so that was an, another idea that came out of those meetings. All right, um, that's all the announcements that I have. Anybody else have anything they want to, any events or activities? But maybe this is a good time before we get into the meat of our meeting to have, to have you, Constance, introduce yourself and come on up and sit in front of a microphone, please. Oh my gosh, maybe this sounds a lot more official than it is. Well, <laughs> it, you know, we never know, do we? You never know. Because somebody might be watching this who's going to write an article about you, Constance. Okay. <laughs> Uh, First of all, tell us where you live. Uh, yeah, I live in Woodland Valley in Woodland Clove. Uh, I, um, my name is Constance Bloomfield. My husband and I have had a place there since 1975. We spend six months of the year here and six months of the year in Maine, preferring this place for the summer, which is fairly unusual. Um, I have been thinking more and more about how um, climate change is affecting not, not only the valley and the town, but also our property and what is on the property, both in terms of the amount of water that's on the property, the wildlife that's on the property, the vegetation that's on the property, and the wind that passes over the property. And I started thinking that it would be good possibly to have some kind of a manual for property owners to start to be able to think about mitigating climate change on their property and preparing um, both defensively in terms of protecting their investment and their way of life, but also in terms of mitigating the damage that the way they use their property may have on the environment around it. Um, I'm also personally involved in writing a book and a bunch of other projects which are n much more top of list for me. <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know how far I am going to carry this forward, but I'm, um, I'm, it's in the back of my mind that something like that could probably be useful. I don't know if it could or not, but, and I don't actually know the degree to which that kind of work has been done for either this locality or any place in the country. Um, but I'm not interested in arguing about whether climate change is happening. Um, I'm at the moment, in terms of this subject, not even interested in how to forestall the advance of climate change is really focused on how do you prepare yourself. And a lot of that is sort of disaster management, emergency management stuff. But um, 
I think there are things that can be done to forestall the emergency that might be coming down the road for you on your property. Mm -hmm. So that's my interest. And I'd be really happy if other people were interested in, in doing that too, because <laughs> at the moment I'm not doing the heavy lifting. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mentioned to you, and, and our committee's aware, and Robert may have more information, that the town has a emergent, uh, flood mitigation plan, it's called. Right. And that is going to be revised. Is that correct? It has expired or something? I believe that's correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, we also, so there's LFA, it's local flood analysis for different, uh, different areas. The town has, has many of them. Yes. Uh, the one focusing on Pine Hill was actually just completed uh, last year. The one that serves uh, Phoenicia, Woodland Valley, Mount Trevor, Chichester, or Chichester, I believe, I believe it's the, the oldest one. So that, I mean, that would be a source of some of the information that you're right. discussing. Right. Similarly, uh, I believe there are at least some <coughs> resources maybe within, um, I was either acting wrong, the Chopin Stream, Chopin Watershed Stream right. Management Program, um, yeah. and CWC. I've spoken with um, Tim Koch at um, Ashokan. Ashokan Stream Watershed Management, whatever. <laughs> um, and I also attended a Zoom meeting that had been arranged through Kristen Gillibrand's office with FEMA and various other agencies. And um, let uh, Beth know that there is a group that's available that can come and do public meetings on emergency processes. And Tim is also participated in that and, and said he was more than willing to do something like that for Shandaken. Um, but that, you know, has to be something that yeah. I think you or some other uh, town body would have to organize that. But well, apparently it's a good public meeting. They bring a little kit for you to take home, et cetera. Um, who does, FEMA? No, it's the, <coughs> it's the county Shogun. disaster it's management. And Cornell Cooperative Extension, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And I it's attend called a all disaster core or something. I forget the absolute, the precise name of it. Olive put one mm -hmm. of these on, mm -hmm. and I attended mm -hmm. it. And I brought the the, nap, the knapsack yes. with all the contents, you know, MRE and all that kind of stuff. Was it a was it a good program? Do you think it got? I think it's always a good program. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think you know, just to get people thinking about having a plan, mm -hmm. you know, how, how, how are they going to respond? Because you never know when an emergency is going to be upon us and um, how to have, a, have thought about it in advance is mm -hmm. key. So to have all your papers in right. a single place, you know, I, I've done a, quite a bit of that mm -hmm. as a result of the mm -hmm. meeting. And uh, I under, if I understand correctly that Ashokan, uh, Heidi Emmerich is involved in this flood mitigation plan revision, and she would like to schedule something like that uh, as part of that process. So I emailed Peter today, Peter and Heidi, um, because Maya is, the, is our liaison, and Maya has experience in this field. Well, and I think that this is Constance, I think this is where this area could shine because this area is already accustomed to extreme weather more we than other areas. We have had to deal with some emergencies yeah, so only I think, last week. I think like <laughs> the adaptation to climate change mm -hmm. angle is a really great way to bring people into mm -hmm. the climate movement in general mm -hmm. because you know, our scientist from Bard that came to Earth Day, he told us that every one degree of warming is gonna be 7% more precipitation in this area. So our issue is flooding, for sure. Yes, uh, but also, we don't know what's gonna be happening with the forest, and we don't know what's gonna be happening with a lot of, of vegetation, particularly, and, and wildlife. Um, 
I think that the, I've done climate stuff in Maine where I live related to uh, sea level rise and um, it got people's attention, that's for sure, and, and action started. Uh, but I do think that one of the good aspects of fo focusing on adaptation is that it gives people something to do in what seems like an overwhelmingly hopeless situation. So, yeah, and it's good backup when home insurance is getting increasingly faulty. Right. Right. You right. Know? right. So, that's what I, I I'm Thank interested you. in, and if anyone else is interested in. Um, the same subject. Um, I may, I may get, I may get to the point where I'll take it on more seriously. Oh, good. Well, as I said, <laughs> we we want to do one of these disaster workshops, and that certainly is. And a, and, a, and uh, as so, I hope to hear back from Heidi. Peter responded, and he said that they haven't started the process yet. He's on vacation this week, so. Oh. oh. Well, if there's any way I can help, I'm yeah. here until thank the you. middle of October. Okay, then I you. turn into a. And when do you come back again? Just in case. The we beginning, don't get of done. The <laughs> beginning of May. The beginning of May. The beginning of May. Perfect timing. <laughs> That's about how fast we move. <laughs> but it well, is. At this point, at this point, I'm not moving very fast on this subject myself, <laughs> yeah. and I should have kept my mouth shut. <laughs> no, I'm glad you no. came. <laughs> we we appreciate your right. interest right. and. Um, it, it, having a disaster workshop is one of the climate smart community actions sort of mm. for the certification process so it's one of the you know things that we're kind of committed to do okay it's just a question of well, timing when you, when you get around to it, I'll let it know. okay good thank, thank you. you thank you very much yeah. yes thank you it's, thanks for coming it, it's adjacent but it, it already a planning event, it may be worth saying to CWC to be willing to talk about their flood mitigation program. That's available for homeowners within LA areas where they will, it, 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 it's fairly lengthy, um, I'm full disclosure, I'm currently doing it with my house, um, where and mine. The, first, the first step is they have an engineer review your parcel and make recommendations on flood mitigation methods. The second part is they have an engineer do the design on whatever mitigation items you believe are relevant and that you might wish to afford with. Uh, those are both compensated, those are paid for by CWC. Uh, and then if you move forward with construction, there's reimbursement up to a percentage. I they pay for 75%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. So uh, I'm at the point now where I have to figure out that 25 percent but um yeah <laughs> but um but that you know the types of things they do raising houses um, um mine in my case it's a, a utility room to move my utilities out of my basement and to put them above mm -hmm. base flood um so those are the types of actions that they take they might be more expensive than that but that program is available to everyone who's in the watershed who's in a area with an lfa which is newly to all of time nearly all of time hill Not enough people know that program exists and is available oh. to them and is substantially funded by CWC funding. What's like, uh, Capital Watershed Corporation. Okay. Their main offices are in Parkville. Okay. Uh, I believe the program manager for that is a gentleman named John Matheson. I've always had a good report talking about it. But you know, it might be worth inviting them to come make a presentation mm, that's, that's that's a either, that's exactly either to us or to the town board. Yes. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, I mean, they have definitely spoken somewhat to the town I find that program is sort of like the unknown, and I think to mm -hmm. what extent your group and frankly any others can make more residents aware of that that program, especially because it's it's not the type of thing you can do kind of on a dime. Like I started this about two years ago, wow. so you really have to mm -hmm. be planning for you know the flood that's in 2028. You know, mm -hmm. um, and yeah. so it's a great program, but it's not the type mm -hmm. of thing that you do tomorrow based off of a whim. It's really very foreseeable. Right. Right. Um, and so I think uh, if you're already going to have a disaster recovery stuff that's, you know, more of like in the event, right? Like we just had a flood, here's the types of things that you should have done two days beforehand type of, of thing. But yeah. here's also the type of stuff that you should be looking for years in advance. 
yeah. if uh, that might be the type of program that attracts an audience. I could easily invite them to the meeting that uh, I invited the next our next meeting September. That, yeah, that our Phoenicia Fire Chief is coming to as okay. well because I'm on a chain with um, John and with Seth from La Bella yep. and great. Yeah, so yeah, I can so invite, our invite September them. meeting then will be devoted to disaster. What do we want to call it? <laughs> Disaster yeah. exclamation point. Flood That's mitigation. what we call it. <laughs> Disaster or planning. Or okay. Yeah, flood <laughs> mitigation. Yeah. Disaster exclamation point. What is planning. disaster in French? Disaster. <laughs> I know it in Spanish. So. What is it in Spanish? Disaster. Disaster. Which is probably the same thing in French. <laughs> All right. That's. September. Um, Can I just make one quick comment? Of course. I mean, I, it, it's overwhelming, and, and some, of, some of it is sort of like people are not willing to change their behavior unless it happens to them. You know, so preparing for something is like large, yes, because this, because it happens, if we're up here, chances are more likely than not that it may happen to you right on your property. But it, it's sort of trying to make it digestible for people to be able to take that first step to be, you know, interested, in, especially if you sort of, if it happened to you, then to make them aware that there's a program that's available um, to help them. And, and you're saying that it's 75% it's funded? So that's the construction part. The evaluation part is, uh, unless they change the program, obviously I'm not the administrator, but it was, it was brought, it was free to have the engineering study that said, Here's the feasibility, flood feasibility projects that we believe you should do on your parcel. Yeah. And it's it's uh, a very simple application, although admittedly I found it a little bit obtuse initially, but they, they walked me through it and it's quite a simple application and every property owner who's in an LFA area is, is eligible for that. And so in my opinion, everyone should avail themselves of that. Uh, and even if you don't move forward with those projects, at least you have a list of those things that have been done. Um, you may be able to get a flood certificate out of it, uh, sorry, an elevation certificate out of that, depending, um, which would be something the engineer. at the very least you would know what your elevation is um, and how far you might need to go up in order to decrease your flood insurance premiums or, or what have you. Um, so I think that's a decent first step. And then the next part is design, which is awesome. So if you then have an engineer actually, in my case, build a utility shed, um, they will do the drawings and work out that stuff. And all of that part is still free. It's just when you get to the actual phase three construction. And again, it's a fairly lengthy program. It has to go past the CWC board at each level, and that takes two meetings for them. So, you know, it's, it's lengthy um, and a bit bureaucratic, um, but it's something that every homeowner in an LFA area can work with itself. Like we have engineers who will look at your parcel and say, your house is, here's what you need to do to make this a more mm -hmm. flood resilient parcel. And I think we're very lucky to have that program. It's just a shame that it's not better known. Yeah, and it's, yeah. Right. And it's exactly the work that you're, you're proposing here. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, totally. Thank you for sharing. And you slightly buried the lead because it's a really good story. And the short story is all of the hamlets sued New York City. There was a big lawsuit and New York City lost and basically what the suit was about was, we all are New York City's drinking water. Mm -hmm. why, are you, why is New York City not paying to protect these areas mm -hmm. from mm -hmm. flooding? And like help mitigate and help the homeowners here like protect the water for New York City. Mm -hmm. All these hamlets got together, sued, New York City lost, and now they pay into a fund that funds that. So like a house raise can be like $200,000. So 75% of that, is a lot of money. It's good. It's good. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yeah. It's very good. Excellent. Thank All you. All right. So um, I'll contact them. <laughs> yeah. If you would invite them, that would be great. Sure. And awesome. uh, I don't know if they're going to want to do PowerPoint or anything like that. We'll. I guess we'll wait and see. But we do have a screen, and that's about all. They have to bring their own projector. Okay. <laughs> Their own extension cord <laughs> or something. <laughs> yeah. Um, so the substance of our meeting tonight, the major portion of it, was devoted to 
the Community Climate Action Plan. Now, our, our committee has written three reports. We wrote the Government Operations Greenhouse Gas Inventory, the Government Operations Greenhouse Gas Action Plan, and the Community community inventory, greenhouse gas inventory. All three of those documents are on the town website, on our tab. Um, so the fourth one is the community climate action plan. So in that, we're making recommendations for, that are broader than just for the, just for the town, town buildings, right? It has to do with residences and, and your own, own lifestyle and behavior. So I, that's why I thought we should do it as a group because it really is significant. And so I, I have, Catherine and I actually both attended both of the meetings that we were supposed to review in February and March. Um, but uh, Angel that was a, might have been there too. Angel was there for the first one. Oh, okay. Yes, he was. Yeah, in February. So <laughs> I, <made it laughs> <impression>. <laughs> I, I saw yeah. a square. You know. <laughs> so let's. Um, so we reviewed these two Zoom meetings because these. Just to explain, um, you know the <laughs> the state invented the Climate Smart Communities Program and the NYSERDA sort of Clean Energy Communities Program. But they, they didn't really have a way to help people who are volunteers like us accomplish some of these more difficult tasks. So they started the Hudson Valley, Hudson Valley, um, Regional, 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 Regional Council, exactly. And Melanie Patapas was our representative until very recently when she left to become the sustainability coordinator for Swarthmore College. But now we have a new um, coordinator whose name is Mina. And she's, I can't pronounce her last name, but I look forward to meeting her at the round table uh, on next week. Um, so these people, coach us and, and help us understand what, how to do these reports. And believe me, we couldn't have done it without it. So uh, they, and especially the community uh, greenhouse gas inventory that, that is the, um, you know, all, all the greenhouse gases that are emitted by our town. It's, it's a, quite an overwhelming data dive. And it, it was a little overwhelming in the process of, of uh, going through the steps with Melanie. So I'm, I'm glad I'm doing it for the second time because I don't remember any of it either. <laughs> but what we, what we watched this time was a basic um, explanation of the process of how there are five focus areas. And then they gave us an initiatives spreadsheet. And we're to fill in our initiatives that we are doing now or have already accomplished, which I put in the spreadsheet and shared with the committee. It's uh, pretty much our NYSERDA campaigns, the, the compost collection, and uh, I don't. I don't remember what else I put in there, but I'm sure I forgot some things. I. Um, oh, I put in the Earth Day celebration. Um, the EV event. Maybe? What the EV event that we had? At yes, the Olive? expo. Exactly the the and the Tiffin debt. Um, Tiffin workshop, educational workshop and distribution. There is another Tiffin workshop. Come, they're giving away more Tiffins. Um, if you're interested, you can look on the Ulster County website 
It's going to be at, um, I think at the community college from four to seven or something like that. And it's next week. It's before the end of August and it's, um, but I digress. Um, meanwhile, back to the initiative spreadsheet. Mm -hmm. So the first meeting I thought was really instructive. You know, it talked a lot about how, how to do this process. And the second meeting was mostly a discussion among other people like us other groups that are involved in the process. Does anybody else have any comments or questions or? I mean, I, I watched both of the, the YouTube Zooms mm -hmm. and what I like about their approach is they're looking at like, what is the highest emitting situation in your community? Yep. Because that's, I think, what we need to do with the climate movement. We need to move faster and we need to approach the highest emitters first and then do a descending chart from there. Mm -hmm. So if it's buildings, then like I like that that's, you know, create a list of actions that have been done or ongoing in the community mm -hmm. so we can figure out like where the holes are. Yeah. You know, what's well, not being done. Are there buildings that maybe could be influenced to switch to some other type of energy that we okay. haven't even approached, you know? Oh, definitely. Like all I mean so in, in our government, up, the government operations is just the town-owned buildings, right? And we proposed that we install heat pumps instead of fossil fuel furnaces in two government-owned buildings. And one of them is the Pine Hill Library, the other one is the Shandaken Historical Museum. And I don't know why we didn't put it in the, also make that recommendation for the medic building, you know, the uh, doctor facility, but we didn't. Yeah. We can always change it, but. Yeah, we can. You can yeah. Have that. I'm trying to think how that's even now. What? I'm trying to think how that building is. It's a furnace. Up. It's a furnace, and it's, yeah. it's horribly inefficient because the library was located, relocated there when the library burned. And oh, the fuel bills were astronomical, and the town's paying them. Yeah. Hmm. So, so that's a good thing to put on our list. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we are working on Pine Hill Library, so we have been able to allocate some money from the NYSERDA funds. Um, yes. To help the Pine Hill Library switch over. So, so we're making progress on one. We're making progress on one. <laughs> slow, um, slow than we might want, but we are we are getting there. No, it's okay. We're we're getting there, and. Um, but we might consider re, uh, redoing the, getting rid of the furnace. That's a it was terribly costly, the fuel bills there. Well, if we complete the Pine Hill Library, then it might be worth amending to show that is completed, and then at the same time add Definitely. Uh, um, yeah. that other building in. Oh, well, we, we're going to have to revise the plan before we know it anyways. <laughs> you know, we'll save that for the revision. <laughs> What about the police uh, <coughs> facility by Glenbrook Park? Mm. That's um, a town building that's or no? That's not very consumptive. I, I don't think their utility bills are very high. I don't, do you remember? Definitely not as high as those other structures. Yeah. Uh, also, I think the long term plan is, is, is likely to see if it's Long-term, you know, nothing, but, but uh, I think that's probably the I mean, in ultimately more economical than trying to retrofit. Mm -hmm. We didn't Such propose as anything as this to this building because it's in the floodplain, <coughs> and we we're not going to invest any anything in this building. But long term, there's a feasibility study that's been done. Has it been made public yet? Uh, yeah, and actually, the, you mean the one about the town hall? Uh, yeah. Uh, which, yeah. So that's being discussed publicly. So like that's the, the the working meeting of that that document oh. is tomorrow. Okay. Yeah. So it's, it's definitely public. Okay. Good to know. Because I missed the. <laughs> yeah, I board mean it's it's, it's, a, it's it's largely a town board working meeting. It isn't. A, it's not a presentation per se. It's it's a discussion, no. obviously a public discussion, but a discussion amongst the town board of that of that study and ultimately. I mean, 
summary of that study is that they evaluated four parcels, and this was an engineering, this was Labella, actually the same that CWC uses, and indicated that they put them in order of the parcels that they felt were most suitable for a town hall down to least suitable. Um, and so we'll be discussing how we wish to approach that. Um, I believe we are also hoping, um, I'm hoping I'm not speaking too far out of turn here, but uh, to allocate, to encumber some amount of funds uh, towards moving the town hall, um, you know, to show that we're, we're serious about this, you know, and so there is some amount of ARPA funds and potentially some other sorts of funds where we can show that we are, we're putting some skin into the game, so we've talked to those partner organizations, CWC being head among them, um, to try and acquire a parcel and hopefully, hopefully get something constructed. Obviously, you know, not gonna happen this year, but if we can make a little bit of progress, and that study, like I said, is discussed tomorrow. Yeah, nice. Right. Okay. And depending on the configure, the size, the, the location, the police building could be incorporated into the new town hall, possibly. Is that? Yeah. Well, is that I can certainly speak to my own opinion. Um, and yeah. I hope this might be shared, but I, I won't speak outside of my own self. Um, yeah. I think that the town would benefit very heavily from having a campus. Obviously, the town hall and highway department being the two main buildings that are currently in the floodway here. Uh, but we also, um, the police building would benefit potentially from being on campus, as well as a place to um, park our ambulances. Space, uh, yeah. currently, and so having that as well as space for whatever other needs might arise, um, and you know, being able to have it be an emergency location during a flood event or something else, um, you know, I think all that would need to be considered. And my hope, slash expectation, is that whatever building is constructed would be built to modern, current, efficient building codes, that we wouldn't design an inefficient building by design. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So Robert, all things being possible, right? So like the site, any plans for this for this site? So my expectation is that part of the reason why a number of partner organizations want to assist us in moving the town hall is because of course this is flood money. It's not even flood money, it's flood bank. It's basically already the river. And so uh, this parcel which has of course cleaning fluid and oil tanks and uh, everything used by the highway department is is, is a self-evident problem. Uh, and so my expectation is that if and when we can get the town hall and even more appropriately the highway department moved elsewhere, this parcel would be acquired by either CWC or DEB or DEZ um, and re rewild, become a you know, right parent number. Um, again, not entirely my decision, substantially used um, after after we departed it. Like I said, it's flood it's flood away. I mean the whole reason this conversation started is rich all hmm. when you get down to it, right? You can like, sell the public fishing rights. <laughs> maybe so. <laughs> um, 
I think it would largely be a land swap type of a situation. Yeah, trading, trading, trading that they would assist us in acquiring a new piece of land and perhaps building structures, and in return, this parcel would be ceded to to, to the river um, to get down to it. Um, maybe retained as you know, place to park things or late unintrusive storage in some kind of but why not? Even that seems to fun. Yeah. I mean, cool. it's just the water's bright. So is the idea with the community action plan to kind of reiterate what we've already done and then also do kind of a lofty wish list of things we'd like to accomplish? Well, that was what she presented right. in, in, okay. in the initiatives spreadsheet. And I didn't print out the initiative spreadsheet because frankly I wouldn't know how. But, <laughs> you know, there, there is a smorgasbord of choices that we can, uh, for actions that we can include, and performance indicators. And many of them are not geared to a community of our size, like some of the clean, or uh, the, the streets. Complete uh, streets, they call Complete them. streets and things like that. You know, it, it, it doesn't, we don't have that opportunity here. But um, there were, you know, like anti-idling policy, green purchasing policies, those sorts of things um, we can recommend, but remember that this plan needs to be approved by the town board. So we need to work together with them on things that we think are important and doable, mm -hmm. you know. Um, we, I, I, I don't want to make a too grandiose, you know. I, I think it needs to be uh, prioritized. Yeah, right. Yeah, and that was what our homework is for the next meeting: is to go into the initiative spreadsheet and sort of pick and choose, and then we're going to prioritize or choose the ones that that we want to in include mm -hmm. in each of the five focus areas: buildings and energy, transportation. And our biggest greenhouse gas uh, emission is in transportation. So that's number one in, in Shandaken. Number two is the energy in the buildings. So those are the two primary ones. So what we need to do is to review those initiatives in the spreadsheet and come up with the ones that we want to prioritize. Okay. Can you email us the greenhouse gas emissions that we've already done, the research that we've already done? Sure. The three reports? Mm -hmm. Okay. But they Want me to email them or put them on? What was the second one? Or just put them, put them somewhere where you can find them. Because <laughs> 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 the Shandake can say, bless your heart, Robert. <laughs> there are occasionally challenges. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'll do that. And then maybe we can um, talk a little bit more about it at our next meeting, although I think we're going to be pretty busy with the uh, disaster planning. So maybe go back to this in October or something like that. Or, or we could have a Zoom or, well, I, I don't know, because of the open meetings law, we, if we meet, it has to be noticed if there are more than, more than three of us, I think. Oh. Well, our total board is nine. So four is five. Wait a minute. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Four. Yeah. So we can't. Four is a quorum. So we can't. Four of us can't meet. We have to meet in groups of three. <laughs> Two groups of three. Right. <laughs> but, but I, think, I think one thing that is helpful, um, it hasn't taken lately, but um, obviously the town is starting to do this comprehensive, well, not starting, it's continuing yeah. a, a fairly long standing comprehensive land conversation. The types of things that you identify in your community uh, action plan are things that could inform that document. And that's going to be going for at least the next year, if not, if not maybe longer. So I think you've got time to kind of discuss and say, and then, like I said, those can get kind of fed in if one of your recommendations is um, adopt the unified solar permit, just as one example. You could make
make that recommendation. Town board may very well accept that plan. I you know, think that's likely, but also that's a recommendation that be fed into the conference plan as well. And then there's yet one more document supporting that, you know, the town board moving forward with that type of a project. Um, and it gives it uh, a different venue of conversation. And so all that is to say that if you don't get it done in the next month, there may actually be some utility to that even being a slightly longer conversation because, again, the conference plan could be going for a while. You've got plenty of yeah. time to, to interface with things. So. Actually, the climate is going really yeah. fast, Robert. Yeah. So know, <laughs> we, already hit, we already hit 2030 levels this yeah, year with the I, temperature. Yeah, obviously there's the, uh, there's the paperwork side and then there's the, it's actually kind of a disaster. The reality like, side. Um, but, uh... Okay. I mean, I was going to propose if we could have like one work session, informal, off-camera work session a month. That would be really helpful with my busy schedule, where yeah. whoever could show up can do like a work session. But I didn't know about the quorum. Well, I mean, you're still allowed to have working meetings. Um, you're you're allowed to meet. You are allowed to, to meet. There's no issues with that. It largely it's, it has to be noticed. Really? And so, as long as it's on a schedule, pizza at Beth's, <laughs> uh, and and is at least ostensibly available to members of the public if they wish to show. Um, and so, you know, meeting in a room here or wherever, it just it has to be publicly noticed. And I don't know how far in advance. I think it might be seventy-two hours, but but I don't know. That's a choice question. Okay. But it has to be publicly noticed. It does not have to be videotaped. We obviously like to provide that to members of the public. In particularly for meetings that are going to have decisions, that's I think very appropriate. But if it's largely <laughs> doing work in preparation for your public meeting, um, I don't see anything inappropriate with that personally. Yeah. Um, and so if you wish to have those meetings, and again, those only have to be noticed if you're going to be core, i.e., four of you um, okay. or more. If a subcommittee of three of you choose to meet and then present things to the body, mm -hmm. then then that's a, in effect a committee, and that's not necessary to, to either notice or or do. So, like I said, you can you can you can delegate work to a small group that is not itself work. Well, here's an idea. There are five focus areas. <coughs> How about we pick focus areas to focus on? You know, individually. Well, the reason I'm pushing for the group thing is because yeah. I feel like. I feel like the way to approach this is the leverage points of where the greenhouse gases are the highest versus yeah. lowest. Right. And there are certain things that you know, and Robert knows, for example, that I don't know having moved to this community yeah. just a year ago. Right. So it's nice to have a shorthand yeah. okay. in the conversation yeah, I agree. Um, rather than like referencing the document that you have to yeah. find. So I right. just think it'd be more efficient in a working group okay. for that reason. All right. So if we have a working meeting. Mm -hmm. When would be a good time? <laughs> we meet on the third Monday. So maybe, and, and there are meetings every Monday in, in this room at this time, I believe. I believe that is correct. However, I yeah. mean, I suspect that we can find space somewhere. What if we do like the first week of the month so it's easy to remember? Okay. Well, the first Monday of the month is the town board meeting. And uh, Labor Day. Although it is not next month. Uh, next month. Uh, it's Labor Day. Labor Day. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> we our, meet. Our first meeting is the night. <laughs> okay. Um, I think I'll put that in my calendar. Uh, well, again, as long as it's noticed, it doesn't necessarily have to be in this building as well. You could meet. The library school. It doesn't have to be in this oh. building, it just has to be noticed. It can be at, it, at someone's house as long as it's noticed. And you're willing to allow members of the public if they were to show up to, to arrive in a Yes. But what about by Zoom? Can you invite them yes. to the meeting? Um, I forget the exact rules on Zoom, but I believe you still have to have a place where members of the public could attend in person. I believe is the current rule. Uh. Um, in the absence of some other notice. Zoom, frankly, in literally anything other than business, that's the exact obvious answer to this, right? Like, you go to a Zoom call, uh, government makes that tough. Like, 
I said, it could be as long as you were not poor. If it's a group of three, then yeah, you can be on Zoom. Uh, as soon as you're poor, and then you need to have a public connection. So big. Well, let's try one and see how it goes. And All right. so, uh, so what about the Phoenicia Library? Phoenicia Library closes at six. Oh, oh so they're start. not right. Sorry. Um, I, I presume we're going to meet in the evening. It's fine. Yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. So um, let's see. Our next meeting is at six thirty on the sixteenth. Correct. Mm -hmm. The only other thing we could do would be to meet earlier, five thirty on the sixteenth. Yeah. The same night, but do it at five thirty. A working meeting from 5:30 yeah. to 6:30. Okay. I don't feel like an hour is enough. I mean, okay. An hour is, doesn't feel like this. Feels like it needs at least I don't know. It's like a two, three-hour session. Don't you think? Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Well, it would couldn't be on a Monday. So let's look at another. And Tuesday, I am. I have a long-standing commitment from. 5.30 to 6.30, so I can come after that. But what about hump day on the 4th? Hump day on the 4th. On the, so September? Yeah. That works for me. Is that okay? Yeah, because I actually may not be in the area on the 16th, so I may do this time meeting. Mm -hmm. We can do it by Zoom. So. Okay. But uh, Wednesday the 4th, I'm available. Okay, Wednesday the 4th, working meeting. Nice. And we're we, talking did six. you hear from um, Elka? We, she fourth. proposed, oh, it's 11 a.m. on Wednesday, the 4th. It's 11 a.m. and it's Zoom. It's Zoom. Oh, okay. Oh, I yeah. know. I, that's what I was talking about. Yeah. Okay. Are we talking 6 p.m.? What are we saying about time on the 4th? Let's figure that out okay. uh, for our working meeting. What time would you like to meet? 6 p.m.? Uh, maybe earlier so that we can get more work done. Before it gets, you know, when the sun falls, you kind of just want to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe like five to seven. Okay. Five to seven. All right. Five to seven. So I'll talk to Joyce about noticing this. Yeah, she'll need to notice it, and she can also just quickly double check the calendar to make sure there's no overlap. I'm not familiar with it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure well, All so. right. Very good. Okay, nice. Well, I think that that will be great. Um, and then we're going to meet here? Yeah, we'll meet here. Is that yeah. okay? Mm -hmm. I have a key, so we can we just let ourselves in. Yeah, uh, and I'm, I'm sure uh, space, space can be fine. Obviously, if it's really tough, it needs to be video recorded. But if it's, if it's a working meeting in preparation for a normal meeting, yeah. and not everything gets video recorded. That's I mean, obviously, this report that we're working on We'll have all kinds of public hearings and scrutiny and everything, you know. Many opportunities for public comments. Exactly. But at some point you gotta write it. So yeah, that's an you important have to work yeah. through it. Yeah. yeah. Um all right, well thank you. That that's I think that's a great suggestion because I don't know how we're gonna do it otherwise. <laughs> it's a pretty big task. It does move us quite a bit towards the silver. Yeah. It's a big, I mean, it doesn't go all the way, but it gets a big chunk. So. Yep, it does. Um, well, do we have any reports? I, you know, I, I think everybody's all up to date on the recycling <laughs> center, the community campaigns. I'm going to look for the tier two, see if we can achieve the two the second tier for heat pumps and EVs. But we need to talk about community solar. Yeah, I have um, some yeah. feedback on that. Yeah. Uh, I actually uh, called, the, um, actually I went through our entire list and checked each one to understand more what each company offered, what the percentage was, and when I, and I filled out all the information on many of them but have gotten no, no real no contact back, um, but it seems like a lot of them have wait lists, and um, so I contacted the two that I was supposed to, and 
one was Nexam, and I spoke to a fellow, and I actually did sign up. I have two properties that I signed up for, but I'm waitlisted. I'm not actually on their grid at the moment. It won't be for another one to three months. Mm -hmm. So my question is, one, does that, how does that qualify for the campaign? Um, secondly, um, NOCO I called. They're building new uh, farms, but the people that I could ask how many residents have signed up, those people have never called me back, and I, I don't know where to go to find that information. And I don't know if it's a personal or privacy issue, no, um, or how to uh, approach that. So I just well, the privacy some. issue to Catherine's point, like that doesn't make any sense to me because we're not asking for, we're just asking for the zip code. No, we're supposed to have the name, in, in the name and the zip code, but that's but the name, zip code, and date of sign up. But um, but still, the one company said he had none. Uh, Ampion and Arcadia said they cannot give out any information due to the privacy policy. And I said, well, I know we have a member <laughs> of our CAC that signed up with you because you're in yeah. Arcadia. So I thought you were in the other one. I'm not in anything yet. I'm oh. on a waiting list like oh. Karen. Yeah, so oh. I, I don't know oh. what so Then if you've signed up but you're on a waiting list, potentially you're still Val well, I, I, I've made notation, <laughs> so uh -huh. we have that data. Mm -hmm. But um, again, I, I, I've completed the contract and everything, so for both of the properties, and so now it's just and waiting so to which see. Which one did you sign up with? So I signed up with Nexam. Okay, for each they're the property. ones who send me letters all the time. But the, they were they're the most responsive, actually, and and actually Nick, I think, is whoever. Nick's plate. He took someone else's place, and I think that mm -hmm. woman had spoken with you because mm -hmm. your name was um, familiar to him. And mm -hmm. NOCO, I, there's a woman named Sarah, uh, and I left a message for her, and she's never called back. Yeah, yeah, it's a little daunting. Yeah, <laughs> well, it it, it's just it's hopeless. It's, it's um, Catherine, but next app, every I get mail from them all the time. But it says they're not. For nice egg, they're for the uh, Hudson, whatever the other Central Hudson. Central Hudson, Central. yeah. Which, well, I'm nice egg. And, I, and, and Common Energy, who I signed up with, whatever the year and a half ago, <coughs> two years ago, whatever that was, doesn't is only listed under the Central Hudson suppliers. But I, I signed up for them, and I'm one of their members. Well, <laughs> the the man I spoke to, and <coughs> I forgot to bring those papers with me today. But he, he was extremely knowledgeable and friendly. We had a Zoom meeting, and uh, he was very forthcoming. But he doesn't have any sign-ups in our zip code. It, you know, we share a zip code with Woodstock, 12457, so that's a little bit dicey. And he actually looked on the map. So he, he did have sign-ups in 12457, but they were in Woodstock, not Chandaker. So oh, he was he's extremely knowledgeable and very, very keen. Um, they really want to do a program for us and be kind of like the <coughs> the vendor of choice. Um, they don't do not have any anything in NYSE territory right now. Mm -hmm. But they're building one. And so he said it would be complete in a couple of months. It's out by Binghamton somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then it would be possible for us to... So I wonder <laughs> if, I mean, the, we didn't go vendor neutral back many, many months ago because we figured that would be more complex, getting people, convincing them to go with the one vendor. But now I wonder if if we did go vendor neutral and we asked Well, we are vendor neutral up. now. Sorry, if we do the opposite, if yeah. we go with a vendor, I wonder if we <coughs> could convince them to put our folks at the top of a waiting list mm -hmm. if we sign an exclusive contract with them. Because that would be the only perk of doing non-vendor neutral, I think, is like this waiting list thing in New York having 8 million residents, yeah. be, just in New York City alone, it yeah. just, there are too many people and too few community solar farms, right? Yeah, right. Um, now, um, the man I spoke to, well, I, I didn't bring paperwork, so well, I, anyways, yeah, it's, it seems he, it's he, a little more complicated. He was, um, 
I, I don't know that we need to actually choose him, but he would come and give, give a presentation. And, and the only thing, that, the negative thing, that I, and I don't know if this is really a negative, was there was a quite a long contract. It was a many years. Hmm. Have you well, encountered that? Well, in my initial You can cancel research, at any time, but you're right. signing and up you, for And you have to give them one to three months notice Yes. When you cancel, and it seemed like most of the contracts allowed you to cancel without any penalty. Yes. But I honestly have to say, having run a business, and when I get into contracts like that, I get a little nervous. You know, I'm like, well, what do you really want from me, or is it is it really that easy that I can get out of this? Yeah. Um, <coughs> and also, I'm, I noticed that some of them have gone from 10% to 5% credit on your bill, and some of them require you to have a two different billings, not directly to yes. the um, NYSEG. NYSEG, but you have to pay them. So that was Separate a little confusing. Billing. So yeah. from a naive or a, a new customer point of view, I found it a little overwhelming. And yeah. um, So, uh, so this seems incentive. to be the common theme, especially in this area that I'm hearing from people where they're like concerned or they're like confused about community solar. So what if we had, what if we asked, you know, three, Solstice, Nexamp, you know, whoever, to come and do a presentation at maybe an Earth Day or yeah. some I sort think of event. Robert, you signed up. What's, what's, what's your experience been? Um, I'm still contemplating this as well. Um, oh. The, um, what I was wondering is from a data collection standpoint, Well, I did ask Eleanor Peck if other uh, other CACs in the NYSERDA campaigns were having as much difficulty as we are trying to get the information from the providers. Mm -hmm. And she said most CACs only listed two or three providers. Mm -hmm. So, so um, that may be the route we end up going, is if we do next amp, solstice, and then this one that I talked to, the name I can't remember, but it starts with a B. Mm -hmm. Because I think Nexamp had like a referral program where we would get $25 for each I resident referred. Do. Oh, do they? I okay. So, yeah. so at least there's a little bit of incentive. Yeah. You know, if we can find one that has I'll check back with this guy and see if their solar farm's ready. I don't think it'll be ready yeah. yet. Maybe October. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Um, well, Common Energy, who I signed up with, which was one of the three, when Michael D'Arcy came a long time ago yes. to one of our first meetings, and he said, it's a limited number, do it soon, and I immediately signed up and got on their supply list. Um, I was getting separate billing, um, but I just received the notice from them within the past month that it, it's going to be directly on my NYSEG okay. bill. Mm. So, mm -hmm. and maybe Common Energy, even though it says on our list that they're only for Central Hudson, maybe they are someone that would supply in NYSEG, or maybe it was so limited that it's closed now and there's a yeah. waiting list. I don't know. Was was that one of the, does anybody have the list of that's on our website? I have it on it's, Slack. I think it's on Slack. Was Common Energy on there? It's under Central Hudson supplying, not NYSEC. Nice. No, no. But yeah, I, I signed up, like I said, right after Michael D'Arcy was right. here. And yeah, I, I, I get it. There wasn't a I know, so they must have at one time served NYSEG customers. Mm -hmm. Common Energy, yeah, NYSEG. Huh. Oh. I have it on the list. Hmm. It's we not have 15 for NYSEG. Fifteen. Fifteen in our town. Fifteen different oh, oh, oh. solar providers that can go through NYSEG. Oh, that's not what's on our town website. I believe. 
Okay, okay let's, let's look uh, into this. Okay. We split it up between common energy and NYSEG when Robert and I made that. Okay. Between what is Central common Hudson. energy? Is that a, another? Central Hudson, yes. Oh, 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 oh. okay. Central Huge Hudson, yes. okay. Oh. Okay, let's, um, let's oh. see if it's not on this. On the, um, let's keep communicating in Slack about this, okay? Yeah, about, about community solar. Um, no, no, no. Maybe what we do is I like, get the working group, we choose the three that we want to go with that yeah. have the best reviews yeah. and just like promote those three, have like a community session where those three have reps come and talk to the community about it Yeah. at an Earth Day, I mean at a farmer's market Yeah. and then just like push those with postcards and whatnot. Yeah. But why don't we have them have, make a presentation here to us in public and then step one, right, to sort of Maybe we can do it yeah. I just feel like farmers market has more viewers than this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we know we have at least a couple. Okay. Let's keep communicating about this. Okay. Well, I am on the Shandagan website and common energy is not listed under the NYSEG suppliers. It's only under the Central Hudson. I am on the Shandagan. So maybe we have to fix that. Okay, thank you. Let's um, just move along a little bit here. Comprehensive plan. Karen and I are meeting with uh, the Pattern for Progress to talk about what the CAC wants to see in the, in the revi revised comprehensive plan. And I really don't know exactly what I'm going to tell them, but there's a sustainability initiative that is part of the certification actions in uh, climate smart communities, and that should definitely be incorporated. I don't know what it amounts to. Uh, I suspect they probably. I think they probably they, know. They've what, done this quite a bit. Yeah. I but I think there are many other things that the CAC could and should uh, recommend in the comprehensive plan. Mm -hmm. So, right. Well, that's kind of the, for the gist for listening to the other towns in the meeting session was what each town was doing and where their focus was in utilizing that. And they kept bringing up the comprehensive plan. Yeah. And you know, filtering some of these things in as part of the overarching yeah. goals. Right. Um, we talked about the Community Climate Action Plan. The NRI, that grant, we don't find out about that for a long time. I don't know when. But, like November, December, yeah, right? something like that. Like yeah. February. Yeah, exactly. So our next meeting is September 16th, 6.30. If there's anybody has anything else they'd like to bring up? Well, your next meeting may potentially be the working meeting September 4th. Well, that's true. Our next no, meeting right. will be the working meeting, but our next public. Well, they're both public meetings. But so I know they're the both public meetings. Meeting one is no good. <laughs> our next regular meeting is September 6th. That is the best house with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be great. <laughs> okay. So I'll invite the CA CWC folks and the Phoenicia Fire Chief to wonderful. the next meeting. That's wonderful. That's great. Yeah. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. So made. <laughs> Second. Angel and Karen again. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.